Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to The Club, where I gotta do uh, my podcast. I'm sorry there'll be music in the background, I hope you just jam, jam and vibe to it the whole time. But that's it. Happy, happy homecoming week. So, homecoming week, uh, the bonds of love. Let's talk about some different types of bonds in chemistry. So, big idea too is bonding, basically. So, we're going to start with bonding. This italicized part, this is all review, so I'm going to go kind of quick on it if it's under italics. Coulomb's Law. You've got to learn to love Coulomb's Law, okay? Coulomb's Law is bond energy is Q1, Q2 over radius squared. So, BE is bond energy. It's really the force of attraction. You'll often see that as an F. And charges, blah, 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 blah. For atoms, ions form by gaining or losing electrons. Electron affinity is basically gaining electrons, and then the trends the periodic table. Ionization energy is losing electrons, basically trends the periodic table. Um, and remember, on, I don't think I made this abundantly clear to you guys, but on the periodic table, whoops, on the periodic table, on the periodic table, metals, non-metals, and metalloids can be found. There's a stair step line um, that starts at boron, and it's every other step. And everything on the left is a metal, and everything on the right is a non-metal. And of course, there's an exception. Hydrogen is a non-metal. That's it. Okay. So basically, bonds form from these positive and negative charges. Electrons that are gained and lost are valence electrons. I don't know why this thing keeps doing this to me. Are valence electrons. There we go. Sorry. Um, why? Why do you do this? Our valence electrons, which are the outer S and P only. Okay? So, for example, if I have this electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, blah, 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 it has five valence electrons. Okay? Only the 4s and 4p count as valence electrons. Okay? Only the highest energy level, which is a coefficient, is lost or added to. Ions will end in P6. Okay? So, this one would become a 4p6. And then something that would be like 5s1 might turn into ending up as 4p6. Okay? Covalent bonding. Typically, there are two nonmetals bonded together. And covalent, aw, oh, the word co means aw, oh, share. Like communists, aw, oh, share all of their stuff. Or if you live in a commune, aw, oh, you do the dishes and I'll mow the lawn. So electrons are shared. They are not gained or lost. It occurs between elements with similar electronegativity, and electronegativity is one of the trends we had to do, right? It's abbreviated EN, and it's the ability to attract electrons in a bond. So, nonpolar covalent bonds. So there's two types of covalent. First one is nonpolar. Poles means ends, right? So nonpolar means no end. So the sharing is equal. So see how these electrons are shared evenly? If they were polar instead of nonpolar, you'd see a bunch of electrons over here, and this would be just the smallest of sections. Okay? So the pictures I have in here, you probably do want to add something pretty darn similar to it. You know, it's probably good. Or actually, you probably print this anyway. Um, so sharing is essentially equal, so it's bonds between identical atoms, O2, or H2, so any of the diatomics. And bonds between C and H, these are the only ones that you should expect to be nonpolar. And we're going to assume different um, bonds between different atoms are always polar. All right, polar covalent bonds. Unequal sharing. One is positive and the other end is negative. This is kind of normal. You don't share evenly with about anybody in your life. Um, the bigger electronegativity is the one that's a little bit negative and the smaller is a little bit positive. So because these aren't full charges, we use the Greek letter delta. Okay, so this is the lowercase delta, and it means a little bit. So this end is a little bit negative, and this end is a little bit positive, which means these negatives would be attracted to it. And there's interactions that happen there. Okay, bonds are more polar if they're farther apart on the periodic table, and that's greater electronegativity change. Okay, so they have to have a difference in their greater electronegativity. Polar bonds to ionic bonds are a continuum and are sometimes hard to differentiate. 
what that means is an ionic bond is a polar bond that's just very, 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 very polar. Okay. So that would be like um, if I said that, um, let's see here, um, if I said that Zoe is a Spanish speaker, speaker, but Carlos is the ionic Spanish speaker. So Zoe knows like five words in Spanish and she's bad at it, but um, Carlos can speak it really well. Très bien, Carlos. <laughs> That's French. <laughs> okay, metallic bonds. Metallic solids have non-directional covalent bonds. Non-directional means it's not between just two guys. It's not like this right here. That bond is not really what happens. So there's this cloud of electrons like here, and all of these positive guys are living the love of those uh, uh, negative electrons. So the electrons are attracted by the many positive nuclei, and the positive nuclei are attracted by the um, many um, electrons. Ionic bonding, uh-oh, bad page break, boo to me. So ionic bonding. Full positives and negatives attract. So it's very, 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 very polar. So polar it's got a new category for it. So kind of like if um, the Jeep example that I used before. If I had a Jeep, I never say I'll drive and I'll take my car. I'd say I take my Jeep. Um, they're typically a metal and a non-metal. Um, and these are the strongest because the Qs are the biggest. Qs being the charges. All right. 2.2 .2 is intermolecular forces, although we don't really get into intermolecular forces here. It's weird that it says that. Um, covalent bonds form molecules. Ionic and metallic bonds do not. So see how this is not a molecule that doesn't have a distinct beginning or an end? This is not a molecule. It doesn't have a distinct beginning or an end. Um, oh. Just got to check my B. Uh, they form molecules. Water is a molecule because it's a distinct beginning and end. Okay. So, um, covalent bonds. So, different covalent bonds have different strengths. First is bond order. If you have a single bond, there's two electrons shared, like this. It's the longest and the weakest. Double has four. Remember, each line here would represent a pair. So, four bonds. Triple is shorter and stronger. So, notice, short equals strong, long equals weak. Okay. All right, the next way we look at the energy of covalent bonds is by energy wells. So these pictures you absolutely need to know. These pictures are there all the time. Okay? So there's a nice one that's pretty. Um, by the way, the x-axis is the distance. So this is the nucleus. And the farther out you go, the farther you are from the nucleus. So you know how shorter bonds are stronger? This is a stronger bond because this number right here would be shorter than that one, this one right here. Okay? So xx is in the distance, so r is smaller. Um, oops. So when the closer well is stronger, r is smaller in our Coulomb's law. Remember how Coulomb's law is bond energy equals q1 q2 over radius squared. So if r is smaller, bond energy is going to be bigger. Energy goes up really close. So when I look at this part right here, see how high that energy is? See how high that energy is? It goes up really close because positive nuclei do repel each other. So there comes a point when they're too close to each other, right? You might like someone to want to hold their hand, but you don't want them to, I don't know, be too close to you. Maybe that's not the best example. But anyway, I'll move on. Um, far away attraction approaches zero. It's so far away, there's no attraction at all. Carlos has already forgotten all of his friends in Spain because they're just so far away. All right. So uh, the other part is this deeper part. See how deep this goes and how deeper this one goes? Deeper is stronger. This axis right here is energy. All right. So low energy is more stable. All right. High energy is crazy. It's moving all over the place. Ah, it's crazy. The other way you can differentiate the strength of covalent bonds is bond energy. Bond energies will always be listed as a positive value because it's the energy to break a bond. Remember, break is positive, and um, forming bonds is negative. Smaller atoms have a greater bond energy. So O to Cl, when I look at the periodic table, um, oxygen's here, Cl is here, and iodine's way down here. So O to Cl is a smaller distance, right? This guy's small, and this guy's big. So O to Cl is stronger, 2O3. Ah, but O to I. Uh -oh. Oops. Huh. 
So, darn it, that's actually not what I would I thought that would happen. Smaller atoms have greater bond energy. And I'm wrong. Oh, no. Which tells us that in that case, what must affect it is um, more polar atoms have greater bond energy. So, O to H has 463, but N to O, which are right next to each other, is a lot less. Okay? So, I think that's it for our bonding part today. Yeah! And I will say to all of you, toodles. Ooh.